Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, to this week's episode of Sexually Speaking, I am Keisha Clark, and I am here with my amazing sister goddess, Rhonda Burns. Hello, darling. Hello, hello, everyone. It's so nice to see you. Hello. <laughs> I'm in a funny mood today, y'all. Just saying. <laughs> That Damn. works. Hey, ah. it's good to be in funny moods. Funny moods it can is. be so amazingly transparent. It feels so good. It mm. does. It mm. does. And thank you to everybody for coming in and playing this weekend. I wanted to start off with a, a quick apology that uh, last week, being our first week back in two weeks, um, I completely forgot to press the button. To we were rusty. <laughs> So, you know, okay, so, um, bad host, bad host, bad host. Okay, we're done. And so this week, so last week, I hope you were able to catch the replay. Uh, we did, we also did manage to get it posted. <laughs> um, we were way out of practice, guys. So, I tell so, you. So silly. Um, and we were, and I've totally just spaced <laughs> the morning after is what we were talking about. Um, and it was some, it, we went to some very interesting places with that whole energy of the morning after some of the choices the night before and what they create and all that. So, wow. Uh, if you haven't listened into that conversation, I invite you to partake of that. And I also thank you for showing up today, all of you who are playing with us live. And if you are playing with us uh, on a replay on any of our replays, you can actually find the link in the information below this video to actually get on the guest list and you'll be week to join us live. So <laughs> we have conversation going on. I tell you, I'm typing, I'm writing, I'm looking around, I'm busy. Yeah. And yeah. I'm I will say last week's conversation, while I haven't actually articulated this till right now, that conversation catalyzed for me, me looking at what I was creating that wasn't actually feeling good, right? So like Ooh. the morning after our conversation about the morning after, yeah. I really sort of like, huh, half the shit I'm doing doesn't feel good. <laughs> Well, that's interesting, right? So that conversation, the energy of it, and just the willingness to look at it. And in the last week, the stuff that I am choosing and getting rid of and stepping away from, it's like, oh, shit, it's on now. Just saying. Oh. <laughs> Definitely don't yeah. listen to the conversation. <laughs> I'm, I, thank you for saying that. It, it was, if I look at my week, really, uh, last week's had some pretty huge stuff going on with that as well. And it really was about getting to that point of, what do I really desire? You know, what, what do I want to create? And what is my choice that I am making? What have I been creating with the choices I've been making? And right. do I want to stay on that course? Do I want to alter that course? Do I want to, how do I want to create this? And so, yeah, thank you for bringing that into the mix. Cause that was pretty pivotal. Awesome. last week huge 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 things it never shows up the way we think it will it never does said that, it's like <laughs> thanks because the universe will send to us give to us show us in the, in the ways that we are opened and allowing it to, to flow and yeah. so it often comes through conversations right and usually it's not ever cognitive it's like oh yeah. you sneaky bugger keep that shit up because that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> yes yes Lots of that, please. i love it <laughs> okay and so that brings us into today's topic which um it it could be a little controversial for some folks and uh what is it you might be wondering well i'm sure you many of you who are alive you actually saw the write-up on the email we're talking about a sexual revolution um so do you feel a sense of freedom when it comes to your sex, sexuality, sexualness? Do you have ease with the energies of sex? Many people do not. A lot of us are aware of this. <laughs> um, you might be one of them. And if you are, cool. What can this conversation uh, change, shift, and maybe even just completely eradicate for you um we had some sexual we had sexual revolution of the 60s the 1960s there have actually been a few other sexual revolutions and um <laughs> throughout our collective history so what is all of this constriction and repression and confliction and insanity that is still Ooh. existing with sex and all things sexual mm. so what if everything you thought was a revolution was actually something else 
And what if you could have your own sexual revolution, like a whisper for a little throw over, a little shout out for Tracy Chapman there. And um, what can we be willing to choose now that would actually allow true change with all things sex and the sex of everything. And if it's your first time joining our conversations, we are celebrating all things sex and the sex of everything on these unconventional conversations to unfuck your life. So that's where we are playing in the realm and the arena of sexually speaking. We're including the energies of copulation as what we call sex, and we're also including all of those many, many, many more energies and possibilities that seldom are discussed or even represented or even alluded to in most of the conventional conversations about sex. So that's kind of where we're hopping in today, sexual revolution. Ooh, I love what you got, Miss Rhonda? What's I turning? just love the word revolution. It has so much intensity in it. It has so much energy in it. It has so much change, right? Like it's the energy of change. It's the energy of I've had enough and I'm going to have what I desire. Now, revolutions often come with, you know, overthrowing governments and there's a lot of um, uh, malice and, and there's a lot of, you know, not so kind things in it. But the, if I look at the energy and really feel into the energy, it's just, it's a populace or a person saying enough, I'm not going to keep going along like that anymore. I'm having what I want. And so yeah. when I look at this from everything I've been looking under a magnifying glass in the last week or two, there's so much of that in my life. It's like, and I have made tremendous strides and I've made, right? Like, just like you, we choose and we keep choosing and we shift and we let go of stuff and we keep moving on and we keep showing up more. But I had an amazing call on Saturday with someone and, and the, it's the same freaking message time and time again. I am the only one in my way. I am the only one who's not willing to like let the lid off to the degree um, that, that I truly be. Right. And, and so it's like, I, I had to admit to myself, I'm still trying to play to everybody. I'm still trying to make sure that everybody's taken care of, that everybody's got what they need rather than just like let the lid off and let the, the cards fall where the chips fall where they may. And, and so if we tie this into, sex right so many of us are so repressed we like we are in physical bodies that are made to have a good time they're made to feel good like hello and we repress and we repress and we repress and it's like who are we fucking doing that for thank and you it's like good lord almighty it is time to stop that shit. <laughs> at least for me i just got really clear i'm tired of working so fucking hard to make sure everybody's happy i'm done yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, 11-22-2016. <laughs> and such a time. Rhonda's fucking done. If you don't like it, there's the door. Mwah. Love ya. Don't hate you. Ain't no ounce of hate here, but I am done playing nice. Yeah. I, I, just, I ain't got nothing. I'm done. That's all I got. <laughs> and what else can I say? <laughs> so, Keisha, how about you, love? <laughs> <laughs> Ditto! <laughs> I actually, now you know me, I like to go to etymology online here. So, of course, I did that. And um, I thought this was really interesting because um, there is so much of that energy of, you know, the rising up and, and right. the intensity and the woo. Yeah. And so here's, here's what I found. And I just want to kind of put this in the mix because I thought this was really fascinating. This is one of those instances where the word we're using it didn't actually start out in the same context or the same context tense that we play with it now. So, so revolution as a noun, uh, this is according to etymology online folks. If you want to, if you want to go there, you can check my work. Um, uh, from the late 14th century originally was pertaining to of celestial bodies from the old French revolution, uh, which was a course or a revolution, which meant the revolving of the celestial bodies. Okay, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. We have that cyclical thing. We have the mm. so uh, or directly from late Latin revolutionem. I feel like I'm in Harry Potter already. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. Which is a nominative of revolutio is a revolving, literally what it meant, a revolving. So it was a noun of action from a past part of past participle stem of Latin revolver or to turn 
or roll back is what that refers to. Now, I thought this was interesting. In the general sense, uh, instance of great change in affairs is recorded from the mid 15th century. So a century later from the, the time that this word started to be used, uh, the political meaning, which was to overthrow an established political system, first recorded was around uh, the 1600, derived from the French, and it was especially applied to the expulsion of the Stuart dynasty under James II in 1688 and the transfer of sovereignty to William and Mary. So I thought that was fascinating that in initially we were talking about the revolving, the Right. the dance of the celestial bodies. So that energy was really intriguing to me. And then uh, I also looked at the at the word, the root of the word revolution, the revolve. revolve. And then we brought that energy of the revolt into it. Yeah. And I thought that that was fascinating because then we combined, we sort of integrated that energy into that. And, and I was like, so what do we know about the energy of a cycle? What do we know about the energy of um, the revolving? And what is that source that we're dancing around that we're aware of that at certain times we know it is time to rise up and be the intensity required? You know, um, here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going into our fall season. Well, we're in our fall season. We're going into our winter in another month. And in the Southern Hemisphere, they're coming into their spring. Right. And, um, and I thought, okay, so if I look at that information and I play with the nature of sex, you know, the energies of sex, and we, we see the ebb and the flow, we, we talk about that on many of our conversations, the, the aliveness of it, the right. cyclical nature of it. Um, not that we have to lock anything into a fixed pattern, but we are aware that there is the ebb and there is the flow. There are times of intensity. There are times of that drawback, the exhale and the inhale. And, um, and so I was looking at that and then I was playing with the whole sexual revolution thing. And I looked at the sexual revolution of the 60s where there were, you know, the advent of birth control for women um, gave women more choice. It, right. uh, you know, that's what we thought. <laughs> gave women more choice right. with our bodies. Uh, the bra burnings, the whole ex the experimenting with different recreational um, um, concoctions. <laughs> um, and... I wonder, like there was an energy there that I was perceiving that there was, there's the experimentation, there's the whole like, we're going to play with new things, you know, we're, we're going to not repress our desire, we're going to, we're going to step out there a little bit more. And I'm curious, like, did that take us forward? Or did that do something else not take us backward necessarily did it take us forward or did we yeah that's kind of what i got like did it create a different way for us to maintain a wrongness of us did it create a different distraction for us rather than actually take us forward with a new way to play with our bodies with the yeah. sexual energies with and so what is that what is that tide that we can ride to have the sexual revolution, to have that revolver, and to have the revolt, the, the turning away from what doesn't appeal to us, what doesn't light us up, and what does bring us actual joy, ecstasy. This is fascinating. Like, I'm loving this conversation. The energies are just so, they're like, they come in and they're like, and then they kind of, oh, like, okay, stay with me. So as you were talking about when you said revolt, right, and you were talking about revolution and the celestial bodies, bodies revolving, what I got is at some point we have given away our abilities, our capacities, our choice as these infinite beings. We talked about this before of these celestial bodies, right? Mm -hmm. And so we repress and we become oppressed. We've allowed that and for whatever reason. And it's like, okay, stop ringing phone. I thought I turned you off. Ha ha, welcome to <laughs> reaction. Um, shut up. Okay, focus. Welcome to my world. 
that the revolt is the, the, the need for that really big rise of energy to push back and say no more. It's like, what if there's a different way? What if it's just choice of like, I'll have that. I'll have that. Oh, I'm having that. I don't want that, right? Rather than the need for this insurgence of, now if that sometimes that is fun, right? To just that big release, like a big tsunami wave. But over time, that can't be sustained. It's not actually sustainable to be in that, like it has to ebb and flow, as you said. So mm -hmm. that's what came in first is like, I love that. Huh, there was a need somewhere that like it had to rise, you know, and crescendo to the effect to then the revolt, the revolt takes place, but it's like, Oh, well that actually potentially could be a limitation if we're just not willing to recognize I want what I want, I'm having it. And I don't have to revolt against anybody to have it. There's a whole lot more ease in that. Yeah. And so I desire to be from freedom and choice of if I feel like getting intense, I'll get intense. If I feel like going with ease, right? Does this make any sense? Uh-huh. So that's yeah. really what I was looking at, like what you were talking like it's fascinating. And I was thinking of too, like part of what this when you when you apply when I was applying or as I apply this in the context of the revolution from the 16th century or from the 1600s application of it, like the overthrowing of an established government, um, I heard the word, "Who are you letting be your sexual governor?" Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Giving your power away. Giving yeah. your power away again, yeah. right? That's good. And what does that create, really? Like, when we're giving our power away, we can only go for so long a time before we get to the point of the intensity that we are going to strike back. We are going to either implode or explode. And, you know, however that looks for each of us uniquely. Um, so, so what is this? Um, what is it? Like, there's something here with the sexual energies it's as though if we're not willing, oh, and we did a show on sexual sovereignty. Right, right. <laughs> that was like our third or fourth show. Just, uh, um, yeah. What is that? So bringing the energy of that being sexually sovereign, your sexual sovereignty, um, where are any of you, uh, any of us, all of the places that we're, consciously or unconsciously allowing something to govern our sexual energies. And that's the energy of creation. That's the energy of creativity. That's the energy of relationship. That's the energy of, of business that for, for us in the context of how we talk in these conversations. So um, Eleanor has a great point here. I wonder. Yeah. And the one above it too, I was going to mention. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's bring that in. Yeah. So Cause a lot of people think of this as part of a revolution. Right. And that's the energy is like how much it is, is so Eleanor in the chat room typed, she was watching the AMAs, the American Music Association Awards on Sunday. And wow, a lot of plain see-through clothes, no undies and a lot of boob exposure. So truth, how many women are tired of being modest or being like following the necessary imposed by whatever tribes it's funny that that word just came through um societies you know businesses the mu the music industry like whatever yeah the the um the governing bodies are like what how many of them are just like you know what fuck it it doesn't feel good anymore so i get that that is a revolution of sorts like they're like enough yeah. and and it, it's certainly causing people <laughs> to like judge it, hate it, love it, re, you know, rejoice in it, like all the feelings, right? But it's causing, it's catalyzing something for yeah. sure. Interesting. What were you going to say on that? Well, I was looking at, you know, how often do we see the, the, the sort of the, the process of uh, a lot of us use our, the way we dress, you know, to express our point of view. And I can remember when I was in school, um, in high school, uh, as I was getting a little more daring with, you know, what I was willing to put on and, mm -hmm. and show off, you know, uh, I got different reactions, of course. And where I was functioning from largely at that point in my life was 
a separation energy. And I think it's interesting that that's another part of what Eleanor is speaking to in the chat room. I wonder, right. was there a separation between women who wanted the revolution and women who didn't? And, um, and I see that energy present now as yeah. well. I've seen that energy all of my life, that there are people, regardless of the gender, so with women, I've seen women who were um, very much along the lines of the ideas of what modesty should be and how we should keep it hidden and keep it it's not anyone else's business and it's only for your husband kind of thing right. I've seen women that went to the other extreme uh, that were like it's for everybody you know right. <laughs> and then there are lots of us in between and where I was at in my high school days was very much that um, separateness that one up man or one up woman ship <laughs> kind of thing and I would I would put some of the clothing that I wore, I would put it on to see what kind of reaction I got. Yeah. And, I, and I get that, that now, hindsight being so wonderfully what it is, part of what I get is that I, because I was not governing my sexual energies, I was letting it be governed by anyone and anything else, anyone yes. else's point of view. There was, I was reaching those points where I would get to that extreme intense reaction and I, I would do that often in the form of wearing something out in public that was a little bit risque, you know. Right. Now, I was in theater, so it wasn't altogether uncommon right. for that to happen. But but I if I look at where I was functioning from, that's really a large part of what was going on. Right. So looking at now, you know, and we're seeing in the music industry, in the entertainment industry, there's still a great deal of that expression, you know, all kinds of sexual energies that that aren't necessarily being um, allowed to to be nurturing. They're right. kind of an in spite of type yes. of energy. Yes. And um, and I think it's fascinating that that a lot of people have the point of view that that is a part of them being and exercising their freedom. Right. Um, and yet, I wonder what points of view they are prisoner to in their own mind. Yeah. That yeah. keep them in a bondage of that action and reaction that cause, a, cause and effect kind of mm -hmm. expression yep. rather than their own sexual sovereignty. Right. It's very different when you see a person who is going out in public and displaying their couture from that space of sovereignty, of their own energetic sovereignty rather than from a space of reaction or, or to provoke. Yeah. Oh, Very that's different. Fantastic. Very different. Yeah. And so I would invite you to start to notice what you're aware of. Say, oh, that feels like, or that sense is like, you know, reactionary or fuck you, or I'll show you or proving or defending, right? Just notice or notice where somebody is very congruent in how they move through the world and how they dress and whether it's provocative or not, like when somebody is congruent with, I'm wearing this because it feels good and I look amazing in it and I really don't care what anybody thinks or says about it, you can sense the difference. It is palpable. And so I would just invite you to start to notice, it's not to judge, it's not to make anybody right or wrong or good or bad, it's just to notice so that you can start to hone for yourself your your, your senses and your awarenesses, and you can actually start to know more of you and what works for you. Um, it's often easier for us to notice it in others before we notice it in ourselves. So are you willing to be more aware of what's actually out there um, would be my invitation. Yeah. 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 And that's really the key. That's one of the key points of this whole thing around the energy of revolution. Are you willing to be aware of what is out there are you willing to be aware for you you know each of us are we willing right. to be aware for ourselves um what what do we know is going on in the people that we're meeting what do what are we aware of and are we willing to acknowledge it and actually function with that or, or from that awareness rather than just like shove it in people's faces you know like it or don't screw you you know what does that create? Are you willing to be aware of what that creates too? Right. Um, but this, I love, I'm, I'm loving the word sexual sovereignty is just like so yummy it's to me. So, so good. So good. There's just something about that. That's like, 
yeah, because nobody can touch you, literally or otherwise, when you have you, when you have your back, when you are being the space of awareness for you, really, you, you get to be the one who chooses. And is that what the revolution could be about? Yeah. People get to this point that they feel like they have no choice. And how many cases relative to sexual expression, sexual energy, sexual communication, um, sexual relations, how many cases are there that so many, one or the other of the partners involved, don't feel like they have a choice? Right. And in some cases, they've allowed, they've given up their choice. Right. So that could be very accurate. Well, by the nature of the fact that you've given up your choice, you don't, you're not getting to choose. Right. Now, does that mean that you go, that you gave it up forever and ever? That's not light for me. Right. <laughs> and um, this, this, this whole something of the willingness to have your choice, to make the choices for you. Um, that's enormous. That's really, yeah. that's just something that we, we don't, we think we do that. I get that a lot of us think we're doing it. I did, you know, I'm still finding places that I was, I'm, you know, just this past week, there's been several different aspects of things I was looking at. And I was like, screw, I'm not choosing. I've, I've not been willing to choose. What is it going to take for me to be willing to choose this, you know, with regard to what I was looking at? Right. And, and how many of us, you know, hearkening back to our conversation just last week, even with the morning after mm -hmm. the willingness to choose that night before from awareness right. sets up something very different than the, the unwillingness, you know, than following someone else's lead. So, uh, wow. So what are some, as you ha have been making this transitional part of your journey, um, I mean, I think oh, we're, we're in transition frequently, right? Yes. Um, what are some of the things that you have played with? Um, like, what do you do? To, to keep making your choice. You've been really candid, which is part of why I love to get to play with you um, in our conversations about, you know, these moments that you realize you're still choosing for someone else. You're still right. trying to make sure someone else is taken care of before you are. Right. And so when you get to those moments, what do you start to play with? Do you have questions? Do you have? Oh, I got a lot. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, so it's a process, and I had you know a beautiful conversation with um, Wendy yesterday, who's who's with us um, today, and we were talking about how so many of us um, want that quantum leap as opposed to consistent, smaller, incremental change, because um, the quantum is not actually sustainable. Which was a great point that Wendy made. It's like you know we want all of it at the quantum speed, but right. it's not sustainable. So, you know, I will say that I've been kinder to myself because again, many of us, we are our own worst critics. We are hardest on ourselves. We will bend over backwards times 10 for other people. But when we do something, we are like first to just drill ourselves into the ground about. And so I've stopped that. I've like, it doesn't feel good. And so, so what, are, so what are some of the things that I play with? Well, I notice what feels good and I notice what doesn't. And oftentimes, and, and again, this is what it boils down to is being present in with my body every single moment in every single situation in every single experience or conversation or telephone call or wherever I am with whoever, I notice what I notice by being present with my body. That is ultimately, I got to be there. And then I notice whether it's what I'm speaking or what I'm hearing, how it feels, right? How, what the sense is. And uh, I was finding that as I was going along and doing some of the things that I'd, been, I'd always done or said things, it didn't feel good. And I had to just call myself on it like, okay, am I willing to be brave enough to change the conversation? And it started with me having a different conversation with me. It's like, okay, so maybe that's 
a mechanism or something I had in place to survive to get to this point, but it no longer serves me. Am I willing to let it go? Yes. And here's something I learned in a, in a course that I'm going through. I'm willing to do a lot of things that many people aren't willing. So would you be willing to practice? Because yeah. practice takes the heat off. Practice takes the fear mongering that comes up and it, and it literally disassembles it. So if you're willing to practice letting things go, then you actually start to, to make this progress. And then you can start to speak words that are more congruent with who, are, who you are now versus five years, 10 years, 20 years ago. Yeah. And I, there are things that come out of my, now, my mouth now, people, that I'm like, who said that? But it feels so <laughs> good to say it. It feels so good. So again, yeah. the willingness to practice being disliked or to have people stare at me like, you crazy half spool. Like, <laughs> I got to do what feels good to me because I have been repressed and oppressed for a very long time. And what's happening is internally, the internal being, my infinite being, there's, it's, it's friction because it's not who I really am. Yeah. So as we get older and as we equip ourselves, we become wiser, we become more brave. Some of us are brave out of the womb. Good on you. I want to know yeah. you. Some of us have had to practice and get a little bit more courage as, as time of and then for me, it just gets too painful. It just becomes too painful to be alive, to not speak truth that, that is for me, to say what I want to say, to be who I want to be. And so I, I have a choice to make. Do I want to keep going along and feeling miserable and feeling bad and make sure that everybody yeah. is, is, you know, comfortable? Or am I willing to start to speak and say and do things that actually work for me? Oh, that feels so much better. And here's the thing. Once I do that, all the other shit falls away. <laughs> it just... The people that want to be here are here and they lean in. And we've talked about this in so yeah. many places before, but it's like, oh, there it is again. It's proof positive. I've made it all up. It's all up here. And this yeah. is not a good place to dwell. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a long way around the bend. How did that land? Cool. That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm loving just so many ways that we, can come up with to stop ourselves. It's not, it's not that I love those ways that we come up with. It's that right. we can be, we are so incredibly creative. We are. We are just so amazingly magically creative. And so much of our, well, I'll speak for me. So much of my magic I have used really against me, yep. technically speaking. And, and at the same time, I look at that and I go, okay, damn it. If if I can do that to stop me, what can I do to promote me? What can right. I do to be synergistic with myself? You know? Um, and I was, for some reason, as you were talking, like I was having more of the visualization of the bodies dance, you know, the planets dancing around the sun, orbiting around the sun. And um, it's like, what, if I look at the sun, if I look, look sort of as an analogy, I mm -hmm. guess, um, what is it we're not willing to bring light to that like what is th i know that this past week as i was looking at some things that were available for me to choose um i was really aware that like i didn't want some of those things to be known i didn't want the light on that the light of the public view okay um, public opinion yeah um so it's like where do we get this notion that any part of us has to be kept in the dark? Because, you know, as planets revolve, they spin. So at some point, the, every part of the surface of that planet is at some point in the light, you know? Yes. Um, and if that's not happening, something is very not okay, you know? Right. <laughs> right. So, so when you were talking, that sovereignty came up again. Like yeah. you just, it's like you have relinquished your sovereignty. And my question is, for what reason? Yeah. And we don't necessarily have to discover in this conversation right. today why, but it's right. like acknowledge I have relinquished my sovereignty at some point for whatever reason. It is simple choice to reclaim it, yeah. to reinstitute it, and to allow it. And everything that comes up in the way when you think about that or feel into that, it's like, ah, send it away. Yeah. 
because we are the light. We are from the light. We are the light. We are with the light. We are by the light. It's a beautiful irony, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> We're so cute. <laughs> we are. And it also brings up the uh, one of my favorite quotes um, by Stephen Biko, I believe, is who said it. Um, the most powerful tool, it's sometimes said the most powerful weapon, in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. Yes. And that just always so succinctly gets me able, you know, helps me remember, ah, okay, what am I, what point of view am I holding on to about this mm -hmm. that makes me think it has a power over me. Right. Um, I love, love, love that quote. And so what is it that we have traded our sovereignty for that if we were to choose to take that back up for ourselves now if we were choosing to put ourselves into the position of our own sexual sovereign um would actually allow us to to be having the fullness of the the cycle the fullness of the process of our revolution, of our dancing around this heavenly body, as a heavenly body, and 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 dancing, being nourished by the source that we are revolving around, and and what are what would that empower us to turn away from, as in have our revolt, have our turning toward the the true power and potency of us. Yeah, I have full body chills right now. This is really awesome because um, we are spot on. We are bang on in this conversation. And yeah, like as you're talking and when I finally got this, when I was, do when I've been doing all this work over the years, when I finally got this, the level of power and the level of potency that is in our ability to allow somebody else to keep us imprisoned, right? That we give wow. that, like the creative force and source that that is, and the willingness for us to look at it and to say, oh, I see what I've chosen, right? There is such an immensity in that, that that a, a lot of times will get me out and beyond things faster than anything. It's like, wow, I must be one powerful motherfucker. <laughs> and I, I'm like, oh, and, and I don't even have to go any further with the thought. It's like I tap into the energy and the, I remember, I remembered in my cells. Yeah. Oh, and it's like, yeah, it comes the sun. Right? Yeah. So friends, like, you have got to get the infinite power and the authority and the sovereignty that you are. And imagine if you turn that outward, if you finally release yourself from that and revolt from the oppression of repression and the choice consciously or unconsciously, right? Like, yeah. watch your world spin in a different direction and you get what you desire and you have what you desire and you play with in what way you desire. Money comes to you in the way you, you desire. Like, we're the only ones doing it to ourselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Crazy! Something Ooh. just popped up as you were talking about how we get distracted with this male-female kind of oppositional energy. So what are we aware of? <laughs> um, what I get is like, that's a really great distraction. And it has worked really, really well for like millennia. <laughs> um, and so are we here? Let me, let me see if I can put this into human words. Wow. Um, Choosing to show up here in male bodies or female bodies, do we have to make that significant? No. Do we have to be a female body? Do we have to be embodied female as a resistance to embodied male? Or could we be embodied female as the inclusion of embodied male? Yeah. For everybody that I just like, lost come back hang in there bear with us what do you know tap in what is your awareness um like i get that we spend a lot of our time resisting each other based on 
a sexual label, basically, of gender. It creates right? a separation. We create a separation. Exactly. By focusing on it, yes. And <laughs> Ooh, what is like that? part of that whole, like uh, where the, the, the topic of feminism, you know, um, and patriarchy and matriarchy and all of that is, is what can we begin to acknowledge now that could actually allow for the melding of those energies, the synergistic combining of those energies in a way that would open something up so differently for us than what we've been willing to have before. Um, I so get that that's part of what I'm doing here. That's part of what I desire yeah. here yeah. on this planet with the whole topic of the sex of everything. It's like part of what I'm aware of is that what we choose to embody as has less to do with, um, well, let me put it this way, has more to do with um, our own discovery and expressing and creating than it does having to do with any resistance of any people who choose to embody male or the other gender. <laughs> so, and when we, you know, it's kind of like, I think, um, Gary Douglas was one of the first people that I heard bring up the point talking about we've often referred to each other as the opposite sex, mm -hmm. which, of course, if you look at the etymology of that, the energy of the word, the opposing sex, right. and again, there's that, there's that resistance, right? right. Um, so there's just something here about, um, I remember, you know, many of the view, the images that came out of the 60s and the whole revolution for women, you know, were about resisting men they were about um the the bra burnings and the whole and and i get it okay i get where that came from i totally right. get what set that up i also totally get you know throughout our story many moons ago how we did have matriarchal societies they did very well and in many cases you know they were overtaken <laughs> right um, and then we moved into patriarchal societies i so get the structure and the the contribution of each of those so this isn't really about making any of those things wrong it's more about a curiosity that i have of if we weren't allowing ourselves to be distracted into this resistance of those who have embodied different than us mm -hmm. What could we be receiving from those bodies? A whole lot more. Yeah. A whole lot more. Yeah. I mean, that's fantastic. And you and I have had this conversation before a, a lot. Yeah. And, and we're on board. I get it. Um, hang on. Where'd that thought come? I was writing some stuff down. The distraction piece is, is huge. And, and so I wrote down, you know, what if we could just stop making any of it wrong or right, right, which is the exactly. polarity, yeah. and simply choose what might work for us. Because here's what I know. Before we embodied, we chose female or male for whatever reason we did. And so did. this is an instrument. This is a tool. This is a vessel in which for me to work here on this planet. How do I make it work for me? How yeah. do I make it work for the greater good? I don't necessarily have all the information right now, but I'm like, I kind of like all bodies. I yeah. kind of get turned on by all kinds of bodies, right? Yeah. I kind of like to have sex and copulation with different types of bodies, right? Like, mm -hmm. but yes, like the ferocity of the feminism camps and of the opposition of the patriarchal, like I can see it all and it is catalyzing something, mm -hmm. a whole lot of something. It's like, okay, and Keisha and I are here like, what else is beyond that? What else is possible? <laughs> exactly. And we're like peeking over the fence like, oh, what's that over there, right? Like we're like, because there is such distraction in that, right? There's such yeah. attention and force in that. It's like, yeah. where are we not looking? Where are we not willing to look? Yeah. So it's and a I get, cool conversation. Super I, cool. I get that that keeps us, in, it sort of keeps that fight energy oh, yeah. locked in right mm -hmm. which what is that actually doing for our relationships what is that actually uh -huh. allowing the space for between men and women having relationships it keeps us in fight or flight and really even this applies you guys to same gender relationships 
it, it doesn't matter if your body's matched or have the other <laughs> equipment. It's, right. it's more of we can so quickly go into the roles. We can so quickly go into the identities. And if we're doing that and we're having these unconscious things triggering that have to do with the differences and the opposing nature of, of those things that has been invented or that we've bought into, then what is that actually creating in our relationships? Regardless of who you're choosing to, to partner with as your primary partner, right? So could you, could you begin to allow some questions in there? Um, you know, am I in resistance to my partner? Knowingly, unknowingly, consciously, unconsciously, am I in resistance? And is that somehow, I think, it, mm, allow your awareness to show up, if you would, because your awareness is going to be yours. It's not what I'm saying, but it's, it's going to be yours. Right. Um, what I wonder is if it would create the space or open up the space for your relationship to change in a way that actually allowed you and your partner to co-create even greater together regardless of the bodies you're choosing to show up in. Yeah, this resistance thing is huge. And I know you said to your partner, but if people are willing to play with- And beyond. Well, am I in resistance here to anything or anyone? Yeah. Yeah. And then you can, if you get, yes, you are, cool. What am I resisting here? Yeah. Because the resistance is huge. And like our bodies break down because we are resisting energies. We are resisting nutrients. We are re resist, like there's resistance is a really big component here. Yeah. So if you were willing to play with eliminating resistance to anyone and anything, you truly will step back and activate your true power and potency yeah. uh, because there are no forces and barriers up anymore. You're, you're just open to, I see what that is. I see what that person is choosing. Okay. I have a choice here too. Am I going to resist it? Am I going to react to it? Am I going yeah. to defend against it? Or I'm going to say, I see what you're doing and I call bullshit and you can walk away, right? Like, the freedom yeah. you have when you're not resisting is, I ain't got words. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Well, and what came up is how much of the receiving have you shut off and are you shutting off when you're resisting, mm -hmm. you know, and, and for people who aren't in a relationship with a primary partner, same thing applies just a little bit different, you know, in yeah. a different way. It's like, how resistant are you to, the type of partner you're you're asking for. Yeah, um, I've I've looked at that for me. Do I really desire to be with men? Do I really desire to be with women? Do I really right. desire to be? Who do I desire to be with? Does it matter mm -hmm. what body they show up in, or is it yeah. more of an energy that I'm desiring to play with? Yeah. You know, um, and for me, it's definitely that energy is yeah. kind of the first criteria, you know, because I I'm looking for kindness, I'm looking for generosity, I'm looking for the willingness to grow and change and create, you know, um, I'm not looking for a, a pattern to get into that we then declare is a successful relationship so that we can, you know, stay there forever and ever. I like the change. I like yeah. the evolution. I like yeah. the expansiveness. So, um, if you're having, let see, and so in my family growing up, I heard quite a bit from certain members of my family about stupid men, how stupid men are, men are liars, la 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 la, lots of genera generalization of men, okay? Um, if I had bought into that, which for a time I did, um, if I had been continuing to buy into that, uh, by the nature of that energy, the vibration of that, is is actually quite a bit of a blockage to me receiving men if i'm holding that men are stupid just because they showed up as men right, right. um do i know a lot of men who choose stupidity absolutely i do you know a lot of women who do too i know a lot of women <laughs> who choose stupidity as well exactly so it doesn't issue. have to do with their body equipment it has more to do with what they're willing to choose or not to choose right, right, right. more to do with what's up here rather than right. anywhere else on their bodies so isn't it interesting you know and so if we could just allow ourselves to laugh at some of our point of view points of view about the other sex you know um or the same sexes because right. lord knows we all go crazy um i wonder what that could open up in this sexual revolutionary 
phase of our lives in yeah. this in these possibilities of sexual revolution. Um, I have a visual for you guys. So this yeah. is Mia Abraham Hicks, and this was at, uh, she did this, she was on a stage a couple weeks ago in Dallas. So this receiving resistance thing, so it looks like this. It's like, I want, I want, I want, but we're doing, no, no. So we're doing this opposition. I want it, I want it, but I'm doing this with it. No, come on, I really, really want it. No, no. So it's this, it's this constant force and fight against. So when you're asking and you're you're wanting this, but it ain't coming, you need to look and say, am I doing this anywhere, right? It's as simple as that. Okay, you do a scan. Oh, well, I have an underlying point of view that men are bad or men leave or women are bitches, right? Like just right. ask yourself if you're asking, I love visuals. It makes it so easy for That's me. That's beautiful, I yes. Want, oh, come on, baby, and it ain't coming. Am I doing this? Oh, and it usually pops in pretty quickly or you get it in your body somewhere. So that was just super fun. And it was so lovely to see it because she, she was really comical up on stage and being really animated yeah, and yeah. She was in the flow. She was channeling Abraham and I was like, damn, <laughs> awesome. so there you go. Have fun with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And another thing that brought up for me too is like, so as a woman, if I am unwilling to be with a man who loves women, how much conflict am I creating with other women and how much can I receive from the, uh, a man who might have so many of the qualities that I'm actually desiring, but that one disqualifier yeah. gets in the way, right? And then how much does that create confliction with other women? And men, you know, we could flip that scenario. If you're looking for a woman who if you're if you're unwilling to receive a woman who loves men who truly loves men how much are you setting up a confliction between you and other men and how much are you willing to receive a woman who could truly truly be a partner to you simply because you're having issues about the other possible men you know in her life so um and if if you're in the same gender relationship that makes it even more interesting, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a woman looking for a woman who loves women, and yet you might be in resistance to the other women. So what? It's all of those really subtle places that we're having that conflictual energy, or the vibrations that aren't lining up or resonating. Right. So really, what what Ron and I are playing with today, as we said earlier, it's the awareness. Are you willing to have the awareness? of what you actually desire and what you are willing to choose and what you've been choosing. Yeah. Yeah. And here's a great, we love those show me questions. So universe, <laughs> please show me, and it could be on any subject or it could be just in general, you get to choose, but universe, would you please show me all the areas in which I have resistance to fill in the blank or that I am in resistance period. Please show me all of all of the ways and places that I um, have hidden or secret points of view about fill in the blank. Universe will show you and you can clear them and you can choose beyond them and you can choose to not be limited anymore. And you can choose to be the infinite being with infinite choice of just choosing what feels good for you. That's a novel concept. <laughs> I love that. You might be a rebel. You might be a revolutionary. You might be a pioneer. You might even be a maverick if you do that. Hmm, just saying. Oh, bar the door, bar the door. Katie, bar yep. the door. Yep. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have sirens going on in my background. I hope that's not incredibly I obvious. I can't hear um, it. Mm -mm. Wow. So here's part of what I'm loving of today's conversation. This whole idea of revolution, you know, for a lot of us, initially, I think the energy is kind of loud, intense, very, ex, you know, very yawn type of energy, very outgoing, as in taking the fight to the streets kind of thing. What, what I'm getting from this conversation is even more of the invitation to allow your own revolution to occur what if your revolution is really all that matters? Yeah. Because yeah. that's going to be the revolution that changes something for you. Yep. Wow. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Wow. And what could this change in your life, in your relationships, and my beautiful, amazing, magical friends, in your business? in your bank accounts, 
in the adventures you're willing to choose in your life. Um, and believe me, I'm, I'm asking this to myself <laughs> as I'm saying it. Um, Cause we always put ourselves in the process of the conversations oh, and yeah. not ask you to ask questions of yourself that we aren't willing to ask of ourselves. So right. um, yeah. And this is so pertinent for me in this moment in my life. Um, so I'm loving the sexual governor and yeah. I'm loving the, you know, it's funny because I, I do hear people talking about a peaceful resolution uh, revolution. Um, and I think this is kind of more of that energy of, you know, that, that, the intensity of the softness it's it it reminds me of um that still small voice kind of energy you know yeah um so wow what what um what can we change now yeah yeah what's and available now what's possible now what is now. possible now yeah what is what is possible beyond everything we've been willing to choose up to this point and what would revolutionize the way we can express ourselves now for us? What, what point of view, what choice, what willingness? Um, I love the what energy space and consciousness questions too. Um, and gosh, you know, if you weren't having to demonstrate your potency, if you weren't having to loudly express it for anyone else, what could it actually be for you, for each of us? What could it be for each of us? Um, there's a lot going on in the world right now. There's a lot going on in the U.S. right now yeah. with regard to the choices, the freedom of choices, the you know, rightness and wrongness of choices, and wow. And would this bring you some ease if you looked first at you? And if really we just allowed ourselves to be reminded every day that it's it begins and ends with each of us. As Rhonda was saying, we're the ones who get to make the choices in our lives. And everywhere you are buying the point of view or buying into the belief that anyone else gets to make any of your choices for you, oh, would you be willing to choose beyond that point yeah. of view that sticks you? Yeah. What I just wrote down, and it's something that I've been choosing for me, is would you be willing to function from the reclamation of you versus the revolution? Like the reclamation is just reclaiming. I love it. Who and what you are. Yeah. And if you want to do it with an intensity and, rev and revolt, that's totally cool too. But it's like reclaiming to me has a whole lot more power and potency than revolting. Yeah. I and like, like the stillness, right? Like the, 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 the power and the force in that. It's like, okay. Yeah. Just a choice. Holy smokes. This is a cool conversation. Wow. Conversation. I'm, I'm so, I <laughs> love it. turned yes. on right now. I'm just like, <laughs> Now. What else is possible? Um, so, mm -hmm. as always, friends, thank you. Oh my gosh, we adore you. I, I can speak for both for both of us there. And um, we also want to know what you want to talk about too. So please um, let us know your feedback, your your questions. If there's topics you want to dive into, um, or that you would like for us to put on the docket to play with. Um, that is fun for us. We eat yeah. that stuff up. It's yum yum. So um, yes, and if you're in the U.S., happy Thanksgiving this week of November. We're actually live on the 22nd and moving forward here in a couple of days will be Thanksgiving. So um, wow, and how thankful am I that I get to do this, that I get to have this incredible host body that shows me magic every day and wow, what um, what would it take for for each of you, each of us, to allow ourselves to be our own sexual governor, mm -hmm. to govern our choices, to govern our own lives, to be sexually sovereign beings and creators on this planet? <sighs> I wonder how much magic that would open the door for. <laughs> That's good. I, 
I'm beyond words grateful this Woo! morning to you. Thank and I'm beyond you. words grateful. Wendy, Eleanor, thank you for showing yeah, up every week. And every all of you who are calling in, all of you who are watching the replays, um, we know that we air during a workday time frame in the States. So, um, and, and like middle of the night in some other places around the world. So thank you for catching the replays. Um, wow. What else is possible now? Totally. Viva la revolution. Viva la revolution. <laughs> and you can play with Keisha and I on our individual radio shows. So come visit us yes. on adizen.fm. Rhonda's on Wednesdays. Keisha's on Fridays. You've got a good one coming up tomorrow. Huh? This Wednesday. You've got a good one coming up. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, my internet is unstable. Can you still hear me? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the comparison game, flag on the play. Yeah, like the whole comparison thing. So again, this is all around the terms of recl the reclaiming of who we are and what's true for us and just moving through the world. So it, it should be a fun conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. What do, you do you know what you're talking about on Friday? You know, the, the topic that's kind of popping is um, bringing some of my reading offerings into the show. I'm going to be talking about a holiday offerings that I'm putting up and there's this energy of, um, are you ready to give the horse its head? That's kind of popping. So nice. I think that might be where we're going to play. That's fun. And, awesome. uh, I wonder, yeah. Come, come um, play with us. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, we could say Viva la reclamation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's like, ah, and I, I, that's really been up for me because I, I have the book by, um, Regina Thomas Hauer called Pussy and it's yeah. called Pussy, the reclamation. And her, hers is all about the femininity and, and the yeah. pussy. So reclamation, right. It's like, yeah, what have I given away that I'm reclaiming now? Um, and not from a fight. Because it's like, what is mine that I have given away that I can now? Yeah. So that's why it's been really up for me. In the I last love it. Year too, so. Wow. All right, friends. So grateful, friends. Thank you so much. Let us know what you require and desire. Yes. And we'll see you next week <laughs> for another unconventional conversation to unfuck your life. <laughs> You're not sexually speaking. We adore you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>